When I was younger, I used to be obsessed with ghosts and all sort of haunting shows. Now, I'd never particularly had a reason to believe that my house was haunted, but one day my brother came home claiming to have found $10 out of nowhere. I'll never know for sure if he was just messing with me, but after curiosity got a hold, I asked him where he really got the money from. Stupid me assumed maybe a friend? Perhaps he stole it from my parents' wallet? My parents never claimed to have been missing any money, however, something they definitely would have voiced being distraught about had they noticed that we had taken their cash. The story he gave me was that a young girl, maybe about the age of seven, had followed him onto the school bus that afternoon. He had never met this girl before, and had never seen her around at school, but she decided to sit in the seat right in front of him. After riding the bus for a while, she started to talk to him. Nobody else could see her, according to him, and the other kids were giving him weird looks. Eventually, she handed him $10 with a note, and then subsequently got off the bus at the next stop. I immediately assumed that he was lying and laughed, of course. I asked him to show me the note, which he promptly retrieved from his room and passed me a tiny piece of paper. A shiver ran down my spine, as the note wasn't in his handwriting. It read, I'll help you, but only this time, which I believe was in response to the fact that my brother was begging my parents for a Zelda charm bracelet for months, which they refused to buy him. Given that he had $10 now, he could just buy it himself, though. Of course, I was extremely intrigued by this, even if it sounded absurd. I suggested we make a makeshift Ouija board to see if we could contact anyone. So we wrote the alphabet on a piece of paper and grabbed a necklace to hover above the DIY board. My brother was interested too, so he decided it could be fun. Mind you, I was in sixth grade and he was in the fourth at the time, so any sort of movement from the necklace caught our attention and we immediately thought that it was a ghost. After asking a few questions, the necklace began to move and shake. Either my brother was really good at tricking me by slowly sliding the necklace across the board, or it really was something paranormal. We were able to get a name. Kate. After asking dumb things like, Did you watch me complete the Shadow Temple in Ocarina of Time? And getting a yes, me and my brother decided to stop for the night after starting to get creeped out. We never said goodbye before ending. Eventually, playing with the board would be a daily occurrence. We thought we'd made a friend, and truly believed that someone was talking to us. Me and my brother decided to take things a step further and try to record something. So we both got our tablets, placed them in front of our TV, and hit record. The first thing I asked was, if someone was here, move something in the room. There was nothing. Okay, well, maybe the ghost is shy? We decided to repeat the same question, but this time we said that we would leave the room and give it a minute. We went downstairs for five minutes, and when we got back up, our tablets had both fallen to the floor and stopped recording. Coincidence? I mean, things fall especially when you're not careful at placing them. So we brushed it off. In December of sixth grade, though, things got really weird. I had started hearing voices in my head, claiming that they were the ghost I was talking to while playing the Ouija board. I got so scared one night that I had grabbed the Bible that one of my religious friends had gifted me, and would sleep with it. Eventually, I told my mom that there was a ghost telling me scary things. I won't get into detail, as some of it was a little graphic. She and my dad argued for a while about whether or not I was schizophrenic, and if I should see a therapist. So, out of fear, I never told them that I was hearing voices again, but I would space out often, talking and having conversations with this thing that I believed to be a ghost. Eventually, I forgot about the ghost, and we no longer talked. I will never know what that voice was, if I was genuinely insane, or if they were just intrusive thoughts. I was just glad for it finally to have stopped. Nothing necessarily paranormal has happened to me since, besides my TV turning on randomly in the middle of the night or feeling that someone was pushing my legs with some sort of unknown force every once in a while. I sum it up to just be my imagination playing tricks on me now, 
but I do still have this looming feeling that ever since I've played with that Ouija board, I have some sort of spirit attached to me, following me. Not a bad one, but just a constant presence. I was a senior in high school, and I always hung out with my sister, who was five years older than me, and her friends. That night it was us siblings, her best friend H, who was the same age as my sister, and our friend G, who was about 20 and enlisted in the army. We thought it would be a great idea, since it was close to Halloween, to play with a Ouija board for the first time. We got a Ouija board and decided to turn off all the lights in the house and light a few candles to really set the mood. So we sat in the floor of the living room and started our little game. I was sitting between H and G, across from my sister. It took a while, but we finally got a response when G asked if anyone was there. The planchette slid to yes. We kind of giggled because we thought it was one of us. But then it started spelling out Mama. My sister and I immediately go pale and make eye contact across the board. Our grandmother had passed away next door, about a year prior to this. Before we could ask another question, the planchette spelled out the word love. We still weren't convinced. A little spooked, but not scared. G then asked the board, how many children do you have? And the planchette slid to the number two, which is the correct number of kids that our grandmother had. It's important to know that G and H didn't know very much about our grandmother. They came into our lives after our grandmother had passed, so they never met her. The planchette then spelled out the words, Roll Tide. Now we live in Alabama, and my grandmother was the biggest Alabama football fan. She would watch every game. The Alabama football catchphrase is, Roll Tide. My sister and I immediately begin crying because it just seems so unreal. And then the planchette starts moving again. This time it's sliding around and going to the word, goodbye. I ask, do you want us to stop playing? And the planchette quickly slides to, yes. My sister doesn't want to stop. She asks, but why? We want to ask you more questions. And the planchette quickly moves across the board to spell out the word, bad. That was more than enough for me. I felt like if this was my mama, and she was telling us to stop playing, maybe we should take her advice and quit while we were ahead. She said bad. Did that mean that something bad would happen? Or that doing that was bad? With the Ouija board. I don't want to find out. But after trying to convince my sister and friends, it did no good. The planchette keeps circling the board and going back to goodbye over and over again. Finally, everyone says goodbye because it's clear that nothing else was going to be discussed. But then, for some reason, I was talked into participating again. This time, when something answered us back, the planchette moved across the board even faster. But it was between two letters only. Z-O-Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O -Z -O. And that's all it would say. I don't know what the others felt, because we really didn't talk about it much. But to me, it felt like the room became colder. It was then unanimous that we did decide to say goodbye. We were shaking. Whatever we had just spoken to didn't feel right. My sister and I decided to sleep in the same bed. I remember lying in bed and being huddled together and just looking around the room. Every sound made me jump. I swear, I could see dark humanoid figures all around. Maybe it was paranoia, but I definitely did not sleep at all that night. I kept thinking about how Mama or whatever was imitating her had said bad like it was a warning. My sister ended up getting rid of the board shortly after. I'm not sure what she did with it. I know her and some other friends tried to play with it again in a very old graveyard near our house with graves that dated back to the 1800s. While they were playing, they heard what sounded like footsteps in the woods around the graveyard and what sounded like scraping on one of the headstones. I don't plan on touching another Ouija board again.
I first discovered the Ouija board when I was 14. A girl was visiting from America, I'm in the UK, and she told us how to talk to ghosts. Eight of us went to her house and made a board with ripped bits of paper and a turned wine glass. Four of us would put our fingers on the glass, and we would swap someone out every so often. This way we believed that it would eliminate anyone who might be pushing the glass. I'll add here that the finger that had been in the glass always felt cold afterward. Don't know if others have noticed this. The first few days were spent asking silly questions like, does so-and-so fancy me, or who will I marry, etc. On the third day, things took a darker turn, and we started getting responses told to us without asking. It started saying things like, so-and-so will get run over, and X will die of cancer, and other really freaky shit. This scared us, and we stopped playing. Years later, in my early 20s, I shared a flat with my brother and boyfriend at the time, and bored one night we decided to do a Ouija board. So we made a board, as I had when I was younger, and set to it. It didn't take long for the glass to move, and we asked who it was, where they came from, and how they had died. It told us its name was Bill. He was an old hippie, and he had died from an overdose. Anyhow, things went on for a while, then my boyfriend, who was convinced that we were the ones pushing the glass, said if there's really a ghost here, prove it. I kid you not, not a second later, the lights went out. At that time, I had one of those old-fashioned meters that you had to put money in, so after my initial shock, I reasoned that I needed to put a coin in the meter and stood up to do it. But before I got to the door, the lights came back on. Somewhat spooked, I sat back down and me and my brother put our fingers back on the glass. My boyfriend point-blank refused. The glass then spelled out, Chilly trick, hey. After that, it kept going in circles and moving toward me, so I decided that enough was enough and said goodbye. A few years ago after Facebook started and I got back in touch with my old school friends, I heard that one of them had died of cancer in his late teens. Not sure about the other prophecy, but I know that I'll never do a Ouija board again, and I firmly believe that we do tap into forces beyond our five senses. I had to have a Ouija board for Christmas. My wife refused to buy one, so I did it anyway. One night, when my wife was out, my daughter and I tried to use the board. Nothing. The planchette didn't move at all, or if it did, I could feel my daughter pushing it. As I suspected, it's just a parlor game. Move ahead two weeks. While working in the garage on a guitar amplifier that I was building, I had a very strong feeling that I was being watched. As I had spent many hours previously on this project without any sensations, this was disturbing. It got so bad that I couldn't spend more than a minute or so in the garage after the initial encounter without the hairs on my neck going up. Then came the whispers. More like a shh-shh sound, actually. Kind of a be quiet between two or more people lurking about. This only happened when entering the garage from the house, and later when my daughter called me at work to say she heard shh shh when entering the darkened dining room. Since she was alone at the time, I blamed it on the cats. I too experienced it in the house, but usually only when entering the garage itself. Finally, I decided that enough is enough. I went into the garage one night and yelled at whoever was there that they had to leave because they were scaring the crap out of us. No more whispers after that. I wasn't yet into paranormal investigations at the time, so I didn't have a digital audio recorder to leave in the garage overnight. It bothers me now that I had real live spirits in the house to test with and I didn't have the equipment or the moxie to do anything.
Ever since I was a kid, I had paranormal experiences. One intense rule of the house my mom gave me was never to participate in a Ouija board. When I was 14 years old, I'm now 20, I let my curiosity get the best of me and decided to do a Ouija board with a friend. In my room in the complete dark, we began the process. To my surprise, nothing happened. Later that night, I let my mind and fear get the best of me and decided to sleep with my mom, who had no clue that I had previously participated in a Ouija board, otherwise she would have killed me. As I was falling asleep, my mom asleep right next to me, I saw the silhouette of a large man in the doorway. At first, I told myself that it was just my brother. I called his name twice, then noticed that this figure was at least six inches taller than my brother and completely unresponsive to what I was saying. I started to panic and pray as I realized that this was not my brother and perhaps something far more evil that I had invited into the house. I was too afraid to move or to wake my mom. After about five minutes, though it felt like ten years, the figure disappeared. I struggled to sleep for the rest of the night. The next morning, I was getting ready with my mom in the bathroom. Keep in mind that she has no idea what I had seen in her room last night, or even that I had done the Ouija board. She brings up to me a nightmare that she had had the previous night. After I asked her to tell me, the answer brought me to tears. She said that there was a demonic entity in the hallway, and as she went to touch it, it threw her across the room. As I broke down in tears and told her the truth, we proceeded to bless our house. I will never do a Ouija board again. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed these true scary stories, and if you did, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me, along with that notification bell to stay updated on all the latest content. To have your own horror story featured, feel free to submit it to me via the email included below in the description. Also down there you can find the links to other playlists with lots more awesome creepy content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Until then, don't forget to embrace the terror.